Mike here. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the vlog. So today, we're back from Mid-America. <laughs> what a whirlwind trip that was, I tell you. And I had so much fun. Big shout out to all you guys that came to see me, meet me, shake my hand. It was very humbling and I am so grateful for your support because without you guys, <laughs> I could not build these trucks. Well, I guess I could, but you know, it'd be on a much smaller scale. So anyways, I just wanted to say thank you to you guys before I start the video and a big shout out to the other YouTubers that I saw. I saw uh, Chad Keegan and James Pretty and I saw Bruce Wilson and Semi Casual briefly. Um, uh, Gentry and Sons was there and you know what, hats off to them because that truck that they built for Weston, it, um, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't a show truck. I, I remember, do you guys remember when Weston first got that truck and it was like crashed and uh, he kind of put it together when his channel was young. So, so yeah, I think that's really cool. <clears throat> and um, yeah, we want to do it again. Andrea wants to do it again. She wants to take <whistles> Smokey one day. So how cool would that? to go to the Mid-America Truck Show with my own truck. Now, I've heard that the show can be kind of clicky, so I don't know, would they let me in with, you know, a less than million dollar show truck? One can only hope so. But maybe we could go in the, um, the uh, old truck area. So, you know, because there was old trucks there too, which are really cool because those are real trucks. Not that the show trucks aren't real, but when you're spending close to 300 grand Canadian, because the one cab over the K100 is actually for sale. I think it was an 83 K100 and they're asking like $258,000 US, which is like $300,000 Canadian. That's like big money, man, big money. And I am nowhere near being able to afford that. And it's, it's as much fun, I, well, I'm, I'm not gonna say it's more fun because I, I think building a real expensive show truck would be really cool too. But um, I also think it's fun to take a truck that, uh, you know, has had some difficulties like Smokey and uh, resurrect it. Call it the Phoenix. Rise up from the ashes, says the Phoenix. And uh, same thing with Stubby. Now, a lot of you have said that dad should change the name, maybe call it Stretch, but um, you know, Stubby just kind of stuck. And I mean, it's still, it's still a short truck. Um, Dad was working on the truck yesterday without me, partially because I was being tired and lazy because for the last couple of weeks, I have not spent a full day at home. Of course, we went to Mid-America. We left on a Thursday night, got back on a Monday morning, went straight to work from the airport, worked all last week. So, of course, yesterday was Easter Friday and I was like, I'm just, I'm just tired. I just, I just want to play on my tractor at home. So you know what I did? <laughs> I, I, I moved Kenny and made a little video. I wasn't right up to steam. So that video, I don't know if I'll put it, I'll probably put it out. Cause I mean, whatever, it's a video, but um, yeah, let's just say I didn't have all my energy. I know, I know. It's shocking that I could, you know, have a low energy day, but I also took uh, low and slow out and I absolutely love low and slow. You know, that C10 just sounds so good, starts good, such a good truck. It has a few issues though, um, which is part of why I haven't finished, finished it. Um, one of them is it, it's got a, a water, a water drip. I'm not going to call it, well, I guess it's a leak, but, but it just drips in a real big rain. So it's not a big leak, but it drips on the seat. So before I put the headliner back in, I want to fix that because nobody wants a wet headliner and um, the frame has a little bit of rust jacking just a little bit you know to where one day if I'm gonna keep using them I really am gonna have to figure out how to get it out and if I have to peel the frame apart it's a full double frame that's gonna be a big job I know it's a real big job so and then underneath the cab there's some aluminum structure that's cracked which I haven't really shown but I really need to get that fixed so um, but other than that, and you know, the paint blemishes and stuff, other, other than that, it's perfect and I love it. It runs so good, drives so good, sounds cool. But um, we're back on Stubby. Well, dad's back on Stubby. Dad's been doing everything on this truck. And you know, I know the progress has been slow, but <sighs> there's been a lot that's gone on in our lives. And at the end of the day, like dad says, there's no timeline. We don't have to get it ready for something other than to play with. So I picked up some bolts for the bell housing from work. 
Um, so we'll replace some of those that aren't the right ones. Dad put the rear cross member on, or maybe I put the rear cross member on in the last episode. I did, didn't I? Um, but Dad got the shift tower on, and we must have got the wrong gasket. I'm just looking, is that? Yeah, that's definitely, definitely the wrong gasket. Interesting. Um, anyways, Dad clearly was able to save the gaskets with on there. Put the gasket on there. We got to hook up these air lines um, for the shifter. Dad got the air hooked up there. We have the yoke on it, but the half inch drive Milwaukee could not tighten it all the way up. So we have to do that. Um, once we get those bolts sorted and the airlines for shifting, I think we could probably put the battery tray back down, put the batteries in and then fire up. Now, I also have to get the drive line sorted. Now, I took my drive line, of course it was a shorty one, it was like 22 inches long. I took it to Coast Powertrain to just get a long one. Uh, it measures out at 73 inches. Um, I'll probably measure it again. Um, so it measured out at 73 inches, but the guys said that that is kind of too long. They said that's the max, a little more, well, they said 70 inches is kind of the max you want to go with a single drive line because you can get a vibration because it's a lot of mass going. Um, so he said I should put in a steady bearing. And then he told me what the cost was going to be because he said I thought they could cut my drive line, but he said my my yokes were a little bit stretched and uh you know it wasn't perfect um shocker <laughs> truck's been sitting in the bush since 05. um yeah so it wasn't perfect so he, he's he would build a new drive line and the kicker is with him building a new drive line i uh it, it was going to be like twenty eight hundred dollars i think he said and i was like i can't afford that right now at all so um so i said can't do it um, and he said, really, you should be putting in a steady bearing right here and uh, put a steady bearing and then run two, two drive shafts. So I think that might be what we'll do. But good news story. When I went back to Coast Powertrain to pick up my drive shaft, I talked to Ken and Ken said, you know, for what you're doing, it would probably be just fine. You know, this truck's not going to work. I mean, it could go to work but it's not gonna work. So he's gonna keep his eyes open, see if he can find me some used parts, some, some antique parts, if you will, um, to help support the channel and save us some money. And I can't begin to tell you how much I appreciate you guys that donate stuff and help us out because <laughs> it's a labor of love. And uh, you know, when you're just doing it as a, you know, on, out of your own jean pockets, it's, it gets a little difficult sometimes because you know, cost money and the trucks aren't working. They're not making money. Well, I guess technically you make a little bit on YouTube, but YouTube isn't a big money maker, at least not right now. I mean, hopefully one day I could, you know, have a hundred thousand subscribers and make enough to spend more money, which one day we will, right? <laughs> right guys? I've been at it for three years. Can you believe that? It's crazy. Um, yeah, kind of, kind of don't know why. Well, I don't know. I was going to say, I kind of don't know why I haven't grown quicker and faster but I think I kind of know why it's because I bounced around and I should have, you know what, when I put Kenny in the shop, I should have just kept working on it till it was the BJ in the bear truck. But that's another story because Kenny's, Kenny needs a lot of work. But anyways, enough of that. I'm going to get to work and see where dad's at because I got body work to do on Schmoke. And I'm also going to put the glass for the Aerodyne in the back of my pickup because I want to order some glass um so i can put the windows in and i'm getting just about to the point where i'm going to say to heck with it it's good enough um and if the planets align maybe just maybe i could hire the peterbilt body shop to paint it for me <laughs> gosh that would be awesome awesome um but yeah once we get it buttoned up um I think before paint, I'll probably, I'm not sure if I'll do the interior, rip the engine apart first. I'll probably do both. Cause you know what? I think this bodywork stuff can be kind of boring and I don't want to bore you guys because at the end of the day, if you unsubscribe and you don't watch the videos, then it makes it harder to do it. So I want you to subscribe and I want you to enjoy the videos. So we're going to try and make them as enjoyable as possible. <laughs> Whew, that was a, that kind of winded me, but um, yeah, 
You can see I did spackle some more uh, stuff on, so I'm gonna smooth that out. Oh, and I got some rib nuts. So I got some standard rib nuts, but the rib nuts on a K100 uh, cab extender are metric. So thanks to Amazon, ooh, ooh, I got some more rib nuts and I got the tool right here. So all I gotta do is put the cab extender back on, mark the holes and, um, and we can rib nut, rib nut it. Rib nut it? So I think we'll do that. Um, I might wanna just try and get the bodywork there just a little bit more done-ish so that when I drill a hole, um, you know, I'm not trying to do bodywork around the hole because you know how that goes. Trying to do bodywork around rivets and hucks is not easy. And some of these hucks look like a dog's breakfast. So I need to, I need to fix some things. I know. But anyways, enough talk, Mike. Get to work. Oh, and I'd like to fix this too because one, <laughs> I forgot to get my, my hinge hucked on and these rivets, you know, it's tight. You know, I got a little gap there. I don't know if you can see it, little gap there and it's like tight there. So when I paint it, it's gonna be close. So I think I'm gonna have to drill out these rivets and move it over like a millimeter or two. I know, not very much, but I gotta do it. Um, I might even have to put uh, bolts there, but, and I wanna get the spring back on so that, um, so that it's right. And I'm still trying to find this piece here. And you know what's really annoying? I kind of remember, I feel like I threw it in a drawer. And I think I've looked everywhere, but I haven't found it yet. So mm. once I do that, then I could put the door back on. Really annoying, but you know, shouldn't surprise me that I could do something that would really annoy myself, so. Oh, and <laughs> shout out to Big Paul, who gave me a t-shirt, uh, Paul's Trucking Inc. Uh, chart, I don't, uh, sorry if I screw up this name, but Chardone or Cardone, C-H-A-R-D-O-N, Ohio. So thanks, Big Paul. Andrea was saying, it's like a safety shirt. You will not miss me today. So, and uh, you know what? Paul's doing a Mac. Um, and I think his son's has an international, if I'm not mistaken. Paul's a big Mac guy, so if you want to go check out some Mac stuff, he's got a new YouTube channel, at least I think it's new, and uh, he's working on his Mac, so and he's having a big Mac attack, which is kind of cool. Me, I don't know a lot about Mac, so, you know, I'm, not, I'm probably never going to have a Mac on my channel, but never say never, but if you want to check out a Mac, go check out Big Paul's channel, so, yeah, and also, if you want to check out some, uh, some real cool dudes, <laughs> cool dudes. Is that a word anymore, cool dudes? Um, anyways, if you'd like to go check out some really, really nice people, uh, Chad Keegan on his channel. Of course, he's driving his uh, K100 and working it and stuff called the American Dream. And I love that he calls it the American Dream. And also James Pretty. James Pretty has like 14 project trucks. I know, it's crazy. But you know what? He's like an airline pilot and flies like great big jumbo jets but he likes trucks, so you know what? Just goes to show that all of us truck nuts come in different shapes, forms, and sizes. So shout out to James, Chad, Big Paul, great guys. Um, really appreciated meeting him at Mid-America. And anyways, let's get back to work. It's supposed to segue into a bunch of work getting done, but that nah, didn't happen. Ah, using the big camera today. I don't use it enough. I should have used it at Mid-America, but the problem with the big camera is it's heavy. And you know what? I've got salesman arms, so trying to hold a big camera, well, you know, it, it could be hard. <laughs> and look what else I got. <laughs> I got some aluminum. What am I gonna do with it? I don't know, but it was, it was cheap. And when I say cheap, kind of on sale, because um, a shop built it or made it and it wasn't right, so they had it. And he was like, you know what, I'll make you a deal on it if you can find something to use it for. So I don't know what we're gonna use it for. Maybe it'll work for fenders. I don't know, but uh, I bought it and I think it could make some cool fenders, so. Okay, here's the, out, short drive shaft. There we go. So when uh, Coast Powertrain was looking at it, they <clears throat> pulled it apart and the, 
Splines, he said, are a little worn. So they weren't keen on stretching it because splines are worn. But so is the whole dang truck. <laughs> Anyways, but they're trying to, well, they do do it right. So if you got a new truck or newer truck or building a show truck, that's where you wanna to go to get your driveline stuff in British Columbia. So we'll see what they can do for me and hopefully they can find some stuff. In the meantime, we're gonna see what we can find too. I also picked up a windshield rubber, as you see in that, that little short I did. I don't know, do you guys watch shorts? Should I do it? I don't know. But um, I kind of, oh, dad's here now too. <laughs> I, uh, in some ways I kind of, I'm gonna say regret, but I shouldn't say regret. But the reason why I ordered it was because I was worried what happens if you can't get it anymore. So I thought if I get it for this truck, then I have it. But it was, our cost on it's like $350 Canadian. Um, so shout out to Peterborough Pacific for, for selling it to me cheap. But what happens if they quit making it? So I figured I better get one. But in all reality, I probably shouldn't have spent the money on it right now. <laughs> That's never stopped me before. <sighs> Just ask Andrea. Another thing I got were some bolts that should fit the bell housing. Because I thought they were metric, but they're not metric, they're standard. So. Well, I couldn't understand them being metric, actually. But. Well, nobody accused me of being smart, but. Well, I mean, you never know. It's I, like all the frame bolts are metric. I thought I measured it good enough, but clearly I didn't do it good enough. But, um. So that gasket's the wrong one for the tower? Yeah. I just used the old one, and then I realized on that cover there was a good gasket there, so. Oh. Like a dummy, I never realized it till after, but. Well, I can take that gasket back. Yeah, yeah, take the little one back. That's the, that's the gasket that's on that cap. Oh, see, and this is the one they give us. I'll take this one back. Yeah, right, that I is. I should have put that one in, but. Because the one, the one that was on there wasn't as good, but I didn't realize till after that I should have used that one. Well, if it leaks, we'll know where there's a gasket. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cool. I'll take this one back and get my twelve dollars. My twelve bucks, because that's what that cost was twelve Canadian dollars, which actually is there again, affordable. Well, not affordable, but. They gave me a good deal on it, so call it employee discount. I also, just for shits and giggles, <laughs> these uh, covers that you got. Oh, yeah. Oh, right. Uh, never mind. They're 27 inside. Well, what were you thinking that? Well, the frame is 27 inside. I was thinking. Like the trucks down at Matt's? Oh yeah, yeah. Well, why don't we put it in the frame and see if, if it actually fits? I think, I think that's what they were originally made for, but I don't know. Oh, so close. Yeah. Although, yeah, if it was like an inch narrower, it would fit down in the frame. It's too bad we don't have an aluminum welder. See, and the other thing I was thinking, is you might be able to use it for like, well, actually go this way. <laughs> Make a fender. Yeah. But. Yeah. Of course, I don't know where the inside of the wheel. Well, I guess right there. 
So that could almost work too. And just build it so you have a hanging flap here with a chain hanger, kind of like an oil patch. Fender. Or you trim it and have it like that. Well, what I would do there is just take it and cut it back here. Yeah. So oh, so it sits down inside. Yeah. And well, this sits on top of the frame. Yeah. And then I just put two of them together. Yeah, right. That could work. And then just trim it off over there. Yeah. Actually, that could work good. I don't know if it would bend right there, but person could always, well, maybe it wouldn't. <clears throat> but I gotta figure out those little air lines. Mm -hmm. And you said you have an 18 speed shift knob? Yeah, it's in the cab. Did you put it, like hook it up in the cab? No, no, it's just sitting in there. Oh, <laughs> maybe hooked it up. But it's an old, older knob. Well, it's an older truck. Ooh, you got a boot too. Yeah. New dare to boot it. See, this one has three lines. Four lines. Four lines. I wonder what that was off of. Well, I bought an 18 speed transmission for the cab over. And then I never put it in. Yeah. And then I took the transmission Shh. back. But I never took the knob back. I'd even, well, I thought I had the stick, but maybe I don't. Well, we don't need the stick. No, I know. See, and actually, in lots of ways, we don't even need the shift knob. It just means you can't shift in the splitter in little range, that's all. But we have it, so we might as well. Yeah. We just have to figure out where to hook up the airlines. Well, yeah. <clears throat> I think this has. Because there's one, two. There are four lines coming from. There's four the lines on, off this shifter. There's one, two, three. So there's a long line there. Short line there. There's one in the front. One in the front. See, that top line on that transmission outside. Actually, I'm going to go have a look at that again. See where it goes? Well, we yeah. could always Google it. Google is our friend. Yeah. <sighs> Well, and those are a little on the short side, I think, because the transmission's a little bit longer. Yeah, but it doesn't matter because, like, there's a line that was on, that was oh. on the transmission. Yeah. The I, person can just put a I, connector. I in. pinched it a little bit with the chain when we were putting it in, so. That don't matter. Um, and I probably do have some small We just fittings. need some furls and some nuts, and some I think furls. I've got some of them. I gotta go look at that other time. Hey, come with me. Okay. Oh, the 359, old blue. <clears throat> Can't wait to get the 359, get playing with it. Well, and I think we'll probably start playing with it too, because... <clears throat> the weather gets better when we can play with it outside. Yeah, right. It's the one thing when you have a bunch of project trucks is you end up with a boneyard. I should, well, clean up the boneyard one day, but... But here's the the old transmission. See here. Oh. This has this line here. It's yeah. One, two, three, four. See, I think the other one doesn't have a line on there. No. But it's got the line there. So. Well, a line goes in. Yeah. Well, this is a T. Yeah. I know. Is is it a T? Yeah. Oh. Okay. Maybe it just needs a fitting put on it? Yeah, I don't know. 
I don't know either. It's almost like, because this goes to here, it's almost like this must be a supply line. Yeah, right? K2. <sighs> I'd like to get started on K2. Oh, and if you're in Canada, I, I've got this Western Star fuel tank off low and slow that I'm not sure what to do with it. So I have it on Facebook Marketplace for $800 Canadian, which I think is a good price, but hasn't sold yet. And I got some new takeoff steel 22.5 wheels. And you got a hydraulic <clears throat> tank. And... and a hydraulic tank. So that's, yeah, that's the hydraulic tank off Duke, the cab guard thingy off Duke, fenders off Duke. <sighs> Steps off K2, tires off low and slow, played off of um, off of uh, Duke. I think I'm going to take this fifth wheel mount and cut the angles off it and use it on Stubby. Okay. I think. If it moves. Well, yeah. It'll move. I'm sure it's fine. Oh, yeah. They're wiggly, so... You know what we should do is just dump some oil on it. Well, no, because we should paint it. I was going to say dump some oil on it to free it up, but we should paint it. Yeah. But um, yeah, and then over here, I've got that 359 sleeper. She's a little rough. She's a little rough. <laughs> got a dent there. Well, okay, there's a few dents. A hole in the roof here. Actually, you got a cat engine block here, too. Oh, yeah. And you know, well, well talking to the cat rep at Mid America, it sounds like I could use that block as a core for a reman engine, which is kind of awesome. A guy should actually price that out. Even though, I mean, a reman engine is. Probably the cheapest it would be is like fifty thousand dollars, but hard to say. Well, that core is probably worth a lot of money. I mean, it has a hole in it, but it's still a core. But they said they'd take it. Yeah, even with a hole in it. He did, didn't he? Yeah. Use that as a core for a six NZ. Did he say I could use it for a six NZ or no? I don't. Know. Yeah. I can't remember. Well, now after driving low and slow, I was even thinking that a C12 in a truck would be good. Because the C12 is a really good engine, um, long lasting. Like you can put 30,000 hours on a C12, like psh, nothing. Has it got an air to air? The C12? C12? Probably. Because yeah. oh, you were thinking, thinking for, for K2. K2, so you don't need an air to air. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'd like to bring K2 in the shop, but anyways, we're, we're going to, it's just when. But yeah, so this 359 sleeper, if, um, you know, if you're in Canada and you're looking for a sleeper, like an OEM 359, hit me up because I might, I might be, might be willing to sell it. It's got a Freightliner insert in it. Yeah, it's got a Freightliner insert in it, but that could be cut out, so, but... That drive line in K2 is a 17 ton. Oh, so it's too small. Well, it can probably be made to work. But you'd have to change the yoke on the transmission and the yoke on the rear end. Because the steady bearing, what I measured, the steady bearing will fit in front of the cross member in Stubby. Well, the only thing I was thinking is that then you're going to need a drive line for this. Yeah, it's no sense robbing this one. We should just go down to go to P and R. P and R. When we yeah, and when we get well, I was going to say when we get uh, stubby, moving, driving, a person should almost tackle this one just to get this insert out, like I started better than a year ago. And just clean up the frame maybe because the only thing left that i have to do is take these bolts out and in theory it could be lifted up and stripped and i know a lot of y'all you know would like to see k2 running again so 
sadly the rust jacking thing in our neck of the woods is a real thing so we gotta yeah i i, I wish it didn't have an insert because then you know because the frame actually doesn't look bad up there but it's a little bit thinnish here i was looking at it yesterday right here and you can see it's pried up yeah but i think i i think we just pull the insert out yeah and then bolt it back together clean it up and bolt it back together i agree i don't think it's we don't need an insert no and the thing is that rear end looks like it's been done this one's not real rusty so um get different well of course we're gonna probably need all new airbags um well, like new pedestals. If we change the suspension on Kenny, all the suspension on Kenny, instead of being aluminum like this, they're all steel. Yeah, but Kenny's got aluminum there where that one's steel. So yeah, but I um, think I'd use this pedestal. But yeah, just the the airbag. Yeah, mounts. Airbag mounts. Use the steel ones. And uh, I don't know if this camera will focus in the dark or not. Hello, focus in the dark. There we go. Um, I think the the gussets. I think this cab is in good shape, or better shape. I mean, it's you know it's rusty. The, er, rusty. It uh, the paint's fallen off. That's what I was trying to say. The paint's fallen off there, but uh, you know, and it's got some rust jacking there. So I, I mean, that's just taking parts off, clean them up, and put them back on. I'm just talking about the cab mounts, the airbags. Oh, yeah but uh like just strip this one right down to like even take the exhaust off and clean it up and i could get it sandblasted at the sandblast place this is the mount for the the cab jack um a lot of y'all would like me to see that's what's nice is it's got it's got everything together except that's really short which is dorky so we'd have to raise that up again but the cab extenders well you know what i i think we get it going and just leave it the way it is just patch some holes like here Ugh. maybe put some shine juice on it as vice grip garage would say um i mean it's got a few dents and dings and all those would need to be replaced that's but Ugh. yeah it's got the is that wet eh, maybe it's not wet smells like an old truck though <laughs> eh, the corrosion here isn't as bad as the other two because those swell up from the aluminum corrosion it's got lights but and it's got vents down here it's got lots of vents call it a venti a venti it's kind of like starbucks venti yeah this cab is i mean it's got a hole there but i don't know how to fix that but uh it's actually a better cab than well it's definitely a better cab than than it's kenny the best of the three yeah i think this one would be the best bj in the bear truck because it's got four air horns it's got lights on the cab and the sleeper the cab isn't stressed around the windshield because that's one problem with kenny is it's got stress cracks in the in the gel coat and stuff the emblems there like this is all here i could put a new emblem on just to make it shiny and new and i could get these pieces re-chromed take the winter front off or winter front clips maybe get some new door hinges oh yeah and fix this stuff because that's a dent that's a hole and these um oh and this is ding too and there's a little little divot which is a stinker because there's a structure behind that but uh maybe what i could do is pull the interior and pound that out i just take 16 pound sledgehammer and give it a good whack <laughs> yeah 
<laughs> you know, and like looking inside here, it's uh, what the heck is that? Circuit breaker board? It had an inverter in it, or has. Maybe that's an inverter. Um, it's got the heater here, the secondary heater. But this is this is a good a good donor truck for donor truck. It's just a good truck. Let's go with that. And now I've done it. It's sticky. There we go. There, but yeah, this was a shore power plug. So take these off, get them painted, take those off, clean them up. But yeah, here, cab extenders, a little rotten. But uh, a person, I mean, if we want to keep the cab extenders, it wouldn't be. Just put a fender washer on it. Yeah. The, yeah 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 so anyways not like we don't have enough projects to do right now okay guys i did some sanding i sanded my my kitty hair there and there i think it's good enough to put some uh <gasps> some <sighs> little bit of primer on um, this one's still a little bit low. Well, let's get right up here. Sand it up here. I think that's good. That could maybe use just a little bit more light sand. Maybe with a finer grit or maybe some Bondo. Um, same with right there. It's just a little bit of a divot. A little bit of a spot there. But here, nice and smooth. I'm going to call that good. That one's really good. Feels nice and smooth. Same with that one. Um, and then over here, oh, this is, yeah, this is the most critical. Well, I don't know if it's the most critical, but this is the part that I really need to concentrate on now. Um, I'm going to touch up these spots with primer. Um, I'll mix up some, some more body filler, touch up those couple little spots there. And then here, anywhere there's a low spot, like right there I'll do. Um, and along here from when I kind of gouge sanded it. You know, it's it's a learning process. So I'll skim coat this some more. Um, I need to sand that actually. Um, but I wanna get this so I can put the window in. Cause I'm gonna get it so I can put the windows in and I'm gonna prime it. And I might even just spray bomb on some, uh, um, some white paint until I can paint this bad boy. Cause I want to get it running. Cause until it's running, you know, spending the money on a really good paint job is kind of a moot point if the thing doesn't run, right? So, <clears throat> but um, yeah, here's looking better. You can kind of see my high spots, um, like where there's, I got some dirt in my body filler. So I'm just gonna do that, touch that up again. I gotta hand sand that. I'll go down and show you the other side. I, I still have to finish the roof, but you know, we're, we're getting there. I sanded here and I'm really liking how smooth it is. There's a bit of a low spot there and there and there. So I'm just going to hit it with some more filler. I got a big low spot there, but uh, it's nice and smooth. So, and same up here, but I got, I gotta do some more. And over there is looking really good, but I gotta do a little bit right there, so. Ugh. And then, the other thing I'm gonna do is I'll put this handle on and drill the holes, but I'll wait to do that till I finish getting the body filler done. And I gotta change that, cause it don't fit. So, and apparently I got the wrong bell housing bolt, so that's a Fuddrucker. Well, you know, if they can't find you handsome, hopefully they find you handy or something like that. Okay, <clears throat> let's take a look at what I've been doing. So, <coughs> after sanding, I sanded all that smooth. I'm like, this is looking really good here. 
Um, that's going to be covered by the cab extender, but uh, I spread some more kitty hair on here, body filler, and I tried to make it as thin as I could so that I don't have to sand off a whole bunch. A whole, a whole bunch. So, anyways, it, uh, I got it so it's tacking up pretty hard this time. Might be the right temperature or we might be, I don't know, maybe it's the right temperature. Maybe, maybe we're starting to get it figured out. Put a little bit of uh, filler on that to smooth it out. So now I wait for that to dry. Um, and up there, I just did a little bit more there so that uh, I can make sure it's nice and flat. Those ones over there are good. I like them. I like how it's turned out. So now one thing I want to do is I'm going to put this driver's side cab extender on um, to get a feel for how it looks so I can compare it with the other side when I do that. And uh, plus it gets it out of the way and off the floor because you know what? I don't want to accidentally damage it. Yeah, I think that looks all right. So now I can uh, sand these and kind of fix my, my muck up. And I also got to get this silicone off. And this, this is the color it was before. It's kind of a nice gold color. But uh, yeah, I like it. You can see how nice a color this was. I mean, if you're if you're into tan, because it's kind of a tanny gold metallic, but I don't know, maybe I shouldn't have taken that off yet since, uh, you know, since we're uh, not painting just yet, because now it kind of sticks out like a sore thumb, but I got it over here. So I got the piece here, so maybe, I mean, it's a little bent, but if I put this back on, They'll just hide it. You know what? I might do that until I paint it. But I'm going to clean this up a little bit, see if we can clean it up. I uh, took it outside and acid washed it, and it's a lot shinier. Let's see if this will work. At least it covers up the hole until we paint this bad boy. When I say hole, I mean ah, different colored spot. There. That looks better. So something else <clears throat> that I bought, I picked up off Amazon a new handle for here. Because if you remember, we had to cut this one off. <clears throat> and since it's such a pain in the butt with this thing flopping open all the time, I thought, why don't I put the handle on and then we can close the door. So that's what I'm gonna do. And I got a little bit of sealer here. Um, a little foamy. I'm just gonna stick it around here like that so that that way, uh, 
you know, it kind of seals it because what if I end up taking this truck somewhere and I don't have that on there, you know? Yeah, I know. So anyways, let's, uh, hmm. <clears throat> Look at that. Oh, I love it. Love it. <clears throat> nice and shiny. Chrome. Um, one day when we paint it, we will be taking this back off though. Actually, I gotta take, I put this cover back on and we gotta take that cover off so that I can <whistles> screw it up. And when I say screw it up, I mean screw it down. So I broke my T25, <clears throat> so I'm using, uh, no, I broke my, what is this? My T20, so I'm using the T15. I know what you're thinking, Mike, you should be using the right tool. Well, if I wasn't too aggressive on it, I would be able to use the right tool, but I broke it, so. Thankfully, these aren't real tight. So, I'll have to, I actually put it in my pockets when I go home. I take my keys out, I'll dump it on the counter, and then I'll know that I have to get another T25, because I used a little, did I use the impact on it? Probably did. <coughs> so, it's kind of handy that it's got this little cover. Actually, I don't even think I need to undo that right now. Okay. <clears throat> So, strip this in like so. Uh, there, kind of. Kind of fits. Got those in the right spot. Got a nut on the one bolt. Not my brightest move. To do this up, there's these little cap things. Ah! I'm gonna have to get a screwdriver for that. And I said maybe I don't have to take this out. And oh, I guess I, well, oh yeah, way to go, Mike. Now you're, oh, we broke it. Let's just do it the right way and take it out. Gosh. You can dress them up, but you can't take them out. Okay, that's out. And I gotta see if I can get this in there. There we go, there's one. I'll go get a screwdriver to pop these caps out so we can stick the other ones in. Went to go get a screwdriver and I saw my X-Acto knife and I'm like, you know, that could be used as a screwdriver. That and because there's not a lot of clearance, I, um, what's that? I don't know, mystery seal. Uh, there. Now I can. Do I have two on there? Did I lose my other bolt? Let's just say no. Nope, it's there. <laughs> oh, I thought I lost it in the door. That would be less than ideal. So let's just. I mean, oh darn, son of a gun. That's exactly what I didn't want to have happen. Ugh. Okay, I need a magnet. I put some uh, um, tape, but it's the tape for, um, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Vapor barrier tape, and it's sticky. So then I thought maybe, No. Oh, it's 
there. <laughs> Look at that, it worked. Also cleaned out the crack a little bit. <sighs> you know, that's, some days a person wins one and that was, that was a win. So, well, I mean, it would have been a bigger win if I didn't drop it down in the hole in the first place, but. <laughs> I am far from perfect. Oh, so not perfect. And now that tape is. Okay, let's get back to what we were doing. Pardu. Okay, so, uh, go like this, like that. And then pull the handle in, pop the latch out, put the handle out again, wedge that in there, and then push. There. Are you kidding me? Apparently the made in Taiwan latch is too long. Of course it's too long. Why wouldn't it be too long? So I have to cut it. But I mean, it is just a piece of metal, so. Um, and I threw the old one away. But I got the one for the other side, so I'll grab it. So I got the one from the other side. If we line it up, I see it kind of goes like that. Like that, I say. Which has that. Huh. That should work. And I should have put. Yeah, I should have put. Because that's got a snap ring. Well, I got to get lock cylinders first, so. So once I get lock cylinders, then I can pull that out. I hope Peterbilt ones will fit. Do you think they'll fit? Hope so. See if that's... All right, I got the big guns. Grinder dinder, so I can go zing. And I'll do it. A little bigger than what I think I need, so then, well, yeah, a little bigger, so you know, you can always take more off, but you can't add more. Okay. Are you kidding me? <sighs> okay, we need to shave a little bit more off. A little bit more!
Sir. Well, it holds it. We can fine tune it later. But uh, I should have or use a little bit smaller foam, but um, <coughs> but that works for now. And uh, it fits. <coughs> so, <coughs> excuse me. New latch. I ground it down. So if you look, I kind of made it to a point and I just kind of shaved the edges, sanded, well, grinded, ground. Um, and now that works good. It's a little bit tight on the top, but there are, the seal needs to be re-glued in. And if we look down here, it's a little bit, I got a couple of rivets that are popped out. So we're gonna have to fix that. But we're not gonna do that today. So for right now, it latches, it closes, and uh, now it won't plop open. So got the cab extender on. I think she looks good. I think so, I think so. Let's take a step back here. Let me get out of the way. There we go. What do you think, guys? Ah. Oh. I think it looks good. Definitely makes the cab look bigger. So I, uh, <clears throat> you know, and on the other side, it's gonna hide that, uh, that seam. Um, probably when I paint it, I'll take this back off again because it is kind of scratched and old, but you know what, putting it back on for now, <clears throat> probably the best idea. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, slow and steady wins the race, right? Not that we're racing, but. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. Helps the algorithm. And Lord knows I could use all the help I can get. Thanks, guys. Take care.